Let me start from the beginning. Oh, yeah? When I was about 20 years old, yeah. which was a long time ago, uh, in 1942, uh, the war had started December, December 7th, 1941. That's when the war started, when Japan attacked Pearl Harbor. Yeah. And of course, everybody was wanting to get in the service. And I and a bunch of young lads were down in front of the post office down here in Thai. And up up come along this guy with a uniform just like you got there. Looked like a million dollars. He was yeah. uh, he was an army recruiter. And he gathered us guys around. This is in September. I uh, my birthday is in November. Yeah. So we, uh, the fall was starting. It was getting cold. <laughs> and this recruiter had all these young guys around him, and he says, uh, he says, how would you boys like to spend a nice winter in a tropical island? Uh, boy, that's, that's, a th it sounded just perfect, because the north wind was whistling a little bit. It was getting colder and colder. So, everybody wanted to go. So I came home, and I said to my father and mother, I said, I'm joining the army. So I had a, a suitcase, a little small suitcase, and I only packed a little bit in it. And I painted it all red, so you know I hadn't been away from home all that much, and I didn't want to lose it because everything I had to be right in there, right? Yeah. So I painted it bright red, and I went down by the community building where the other guys that all volunteered, and they took us up to Burlington, Vermont. Now we got there, and uh, uh, the first night was terrible. It rained in there. That like you know Vermont's noted as a mud state, clay mud. And we got over there, and they waded us through the mud, you know. And uh, come morning, uh, the fog was coming off Lake Champlain, rolling up. And I could hear a bump, a bump, a bump. I said, well, what the heck? Is horses. Jeez, it was a horse cavalry outfit. Yeah. You know, see, we're, they were just switching from to mechanized uh, things. They, hadn't, they still had horses over there. Well, when I was just a boy about... Uh, that lad's age, uh, age over there. I went over next to the mountain over here. And we used to hike over there all the time. And uh, the, um, there was a horse there. And that horse reared up on his hind legs. And I looked up, and there's about eight or nine foot of horse right over my head. And I was scared to death. And I backed up until I got to the fence and I scrambled over it. Well, that scared me of horses. So when I heard those horse beefs coming and all these guys rushing through with their sabers and it looked just like a charge coming, that scared the hell out of me. Yeah, that is the truth. <laughs> well, a little later that day, uh, I was called in in front of an officer. And he says, Smith, he says, uh, how old are you? And I said, I'm 20, sir. He says, you can't get in the, uh, the Army. I said, I can't. He says, no. He says, you've got to have parents' signature. Well, I see, uh, I had, yeah, in November, I would turn 21. I was kind of lucky that way, because that's how I come I got in the Navy. When I come back, I had that red suitcase. I said to the uh, driver of the bus, I said, let me off right here by the mine, but I just got to walk him. He said, no, no, I got to take you right back where I got you, down at the community building. And I had said goodbye to everybody I knew, oh, I'm leaving <laughs> now, you know. And, uh, uh, well, here's this red suitcase, it's just a red flag, and I'm trying to sneak from the community building to my house without anybody seeing me because I was ashamed. They didn't take me. <laughs> well, I, well I, don't worry. They were hollering, hey, gosh, I thought you went away. And I said, no, 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 they wouldn't take me. So I finally got home and I said to my father and mother, and there's a picture of them up there. I said, Dad and Mom, back pre war, I guess. And um, I said, look, I, I, I don't want to get in that army. I said, I would sign the papers and I'll join the Navy. So they did. They signed my papers, and I was. That's how I got in the navy. So I went from uh, when uh, I finally got the call. Uh, I got on a bus and went to Albany, and then to Newport, Rhode Island. Uh, yeah, New, Newport, Rhode Island. And uh, I got in the, the, the motor torpedo boats. That's yeah. that's what I was assigned to. And they're about an 80-foot bow, and they, uh, they're armed with uh, two 50-caliber uh, machine guns and one 20-millimeter, uh, uh, four torpedo tubes and depth charges. They were uh, supposed to be, they called them the Mosquito Fleet. Mm -hmm. And then what their object was was to hide in a bay, and then when a big ship come out, some kind of a ship, you would dart out, sting them with a torpedo, and drop back in them. That was the idea of the things. 
um, go like a son of a gun. They had three, it had three Marine Packard engines in it, and it was, uh, it run on high test gasoline, which made it very, very uh, flammable. If you ever got hit with a shell, you'd probably go poof like that, you know. They were all diesel engines. And you all heard of President Kennedy, John Kennedy. Yep. He, he was on he, PT boats. Uh, John, um, Mr. Buckley, uh, Buckley wrote a, a book on, uh, they were expendable, and that was pretty popular. You probably remember that one. Well, that was what I was on in uh, 1940. Well, let me see. Well, anyway, I, I, I went to, I had to go to New Orleans. That's where they made the boats. Yeah. Somewhere in the Mississippi, the Higgins plant. And uh, I got down there. I lived on some, well, I can't spend forever talking about me, but well, I'll shorten it up a little bit. I took, we took the shakedown cruise, which where you take a ship out and test it and make sure that it's ready to, to go, you know, and no, no bugs in it. And we went to Bermuda and then back to St. Petersburg and then down, we, we landed uh, the first stop, we, we skirted Cuba, because even then I think it was communist mm -hmm. and stayed away from it. And um, um, you, know, you heard of Columbia. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what, what, what are they noted for nowadays? Uh, coffee. Huh? Uh, coffee? <laughs> dope. Oh, dope. that's yeah, it. There's a big <laughs> war going on down there. Yeah, the dope, the dope trade. And well, 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 if a guy can make uh, $400 on an hour by selling dope, <laughs> he's, he's going to trap. A lot of people are doing that. And that's why that thing is so, you know, so hard to fight, really. Yeah. Well, I went through the Panama Canal. I was on the island of Taboga. Christmas Day, 1942, I was mess cooking, and I lived on this island of Taboga. I was going to ask you a few things on the map here, yeah. how to find certain places, but maybe we, maybe you, what do you want me to do? Would you like to do that? For uh, just keep talking about some of your experiences, yeah. okay. and then we'll have some, maybe some questions that okay. we can okay. find some okay. gaps. Uh, okay, well, uh, ultimately, uh, we, I went to Tabo the island of Taboga, and uh, I'm afraid of snakes along with horses. I'm not as afraid of horses as I used to be, but I'm still scared of snakes. And on the island of Taboga, it's a volcano island. It's right down near the Panama Canal. We're going to look that up a little later. And um, um, I, I step in, and they took all the natives and put them on one side of the island, and the Navy made a, a fence halfway up. And then it was all jungle. And I was sleeping in a little grass or a uh, mud hut. All it was was a mud hut. Mm -hmm. something, something, the natives in it. They had a mess hall down on the beach, and uh, I had to get up when it was real dark. And I could always hear this rustling through the jungle. And I always thought it was iguana. Iguanas are lizards. Yeah. They get pretty big. And they can go through a tree like a squirrel almost. Well, anyway, one morning, still dark, and I'm coming down this little trail that had, the natives had beat a path walking down to the beach down where the mess, uh, mess place was. And uh, I heard bang, bang, bang. Like, what the heck? And I get down right in front of the mess hall, and here is a snake with a body about that big around, about 20, well, long as, almost as long as these two rooms. It was about 20 foot long. And they were rolling just like that. They shot it in the head. It was a bow constrictor. Yeah. From then on, everything that I heard rustling became a bow constrictor. <laughs> you can imagine. But there was mostly iguanas. They, they, they were all over the place. And uh, I said, oh man, I don't like this island. But anyway, we left Taboga. You know, how, oh, you ever see bananas grow? No. You know how they grow? Uh, in, Up in the air. Yeah. Just like that. That's, they're, they're bananas and pineapples. Yeah. I could tell you about a pineapple thing, but uh, I almost got my head cut off for that one. But, but anyway, uh, it was time to leave Taboga and head to the battlegrounds. So they took four PT boats and put them on a Liberty ship, yeah. which is a big transport. And they had them on, uh, on blocks, four of them, two on each side. And uh, we sailed up the Pacific, or the Pacific coast, uh, uh, past uh, uh, California. Our first stop was um, um, San Francisco. Yeah. And that's where, believe it or not, I had a dance, and I couldn't dance with her. I had a dance with Veronica Lake. <laughs> you ever hear of Veronica Lake? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She was a blonde, she was a little slim girl, 
beautiful built, real pretty, and it was a USO thing. And I went there, and I'm the world's worst man. So that poor little thing, I was on her feet. Oh, I'm left-footed. I jumped on both of her feet. Didn't mean to. And I was so happy. I was so nervous. I was just sweating. <laughs> but I was dancing with her anyway, trying. Yeah. I bet she was glad when a guy tapped her on the shoulder, or tapped me on the shoulder, and she had somebody to let her dance. But anyway, that's my experience in Hollywood. The only time I ever got there. Oh, and I saw Mickey Rooney. You all know Mickey Rooney beating the drums. He was playing the drums and like that. So then we, uh, the boats were unloaded, and and they sailed to Seattle, Washington, and um, and I was put on a little uh, freighter called the Delwood. That was the name of it. Okay. It was a little tramp steamer, and they carried the base force. I was on the base force. I was on the boats too, but but uh, mostly on the base force until we got the Aleutians, and. We couldn't do nothing. The crew was taking care of the ship, so all the base members of, of uh, Squadron 13, that was our number, uh, were uh, sitting below decks playing cards and things like that. And uh, we could feel the skin of the ship, you know, the steel around you, getting colder and colder and colder. And I said, Jesus, where are we going? Finally, we heard the motor stop. So I said to the guys down below, I said, I'm going to go up and see where the heck we are. So I see a sailor there, and that north wind almost cut my head off. I just, whoo! I said, where are we? He says, Cold Bay, Alaska. <laughs> I said, I don't think I would have liked this place. Well, anyway, it was cold at Cold Bay. We finally uh, left there, uh, and I think, uh, yeah, we left there, and the, the steamer took us to Dutch Harbor. Where, where I saw the northern, our northern Pacific fleet was on the bottom. Mm -hmm. And I believe they were afraid to tell American people that along with Pearl Harbor, Dutch Harbor, we'd lost a lot of ships up there too. Mm. And we were really in rough shape. And the Japanese were coming up through the Coral Islands, okay. and which consists of Attu, Kiska, uh, well, that's where I was. I was on Attu. Uh, they'd already had, uh, they, uh, the American soldiers had already taken Attu. So we set a base of a, a base of Quonset huts. That's what we slept in. And uh, I could look right over at Kiska, and I could see Japs driving trucks around like that. You could see them easy enough. And one day a plane comes up. Well, well, mostly the illusions are foggy. Yeah. And when you get it be, because the Japanese current swings up there, that's warm water. And the Bering Sea coming the other way is ice cold, and they hit together, and all you got is fog. But once in a while you get a good clear day, and that's when you can look over and see the chats. One day a plane, uh, uh, you know the uh, plane, the, the, the gull wing there, Corsair is it? Yeah. With a pilot in the middle and a two inches on the side? No, that's uh, lightning. 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 Okay. P-38. P-38. Yeah. yeah. That thing, in order to keep out of their radar, I imagine they had their radar, was down behind Kiska. I'm up just like that word Kiska, and I'm watching a Jap over there driving a, a truck. And he opened up his machine guns, and I see the Jap jump out and run. He run like hell. <laughs> Good thing he did. That truck just blew right up. That was, that was so exciting. Well, anyway, come the day for the, uh, the invasion. They, they figured there was about 10,000 men on that island. And, uh, and our, our part in that thing was to be a div div divisionary. I know. In other words, Diversion. divide the attention of the, of the enemy. Yeah. The main force was coming in from one side of the island. And we were in the fog, and we had our, our 50 calibers and our 20 millimeter, bang, 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 just shooting in the fog yeah. and trying to get their attention. During the night, believe it or not, 10,000 men got off that island. The Japs had sent a, a, a convoy up and picked up their men and got them out of there. Huh. And there was still little fires going and things like that. There's no, tre there's no trees on the Aleutians, by the way. It, it's tundra grass. Yeah. And Wildlife is, is hard to believe. I saw that, uh, that uh, when I was in Dutch Harbor, I saw that, or no, when I come, when I left, I, I, uh, that place is rich in fish. Uh, I was catching uh, four and five pound codfish, about that long, just as fast as I could drop my hook in, you know, off the deck of the PT. Yes. And I wouldn't get down in the water, even to the bottom of the, the keel of the boat when they'd grab it. That, that's that's uh, very rich fishing ground. And that's why there's a conflict with Russia right today. 
They want that. Yeah. Were you Especially assigned to any one particular PT boat? Uh, I was on 74 and 76 boats, and I was also on the base. So I kind of, uh, uh, they put me on, I was on the boats when we did the invasion. Um, what position were you in? Huh? What position on, on the boat? Uh, well, I was a striker. I, I, I was a apprentice seaman, and I was striking to be a torpedo. Okay. That was the uh, rate I was going for. And um, after the Japs had left and we secured Kiska, uh, uh, they took me back to Dutch Harbor, and I got on an airplane. And I flew from there uh, over the Canadian Rockies, a, four, a two big two-engine plane. And I can just remember seeing peaks of mountains sticking through the fog, you know. I, I, I can only imagine it was, it was that same uh, Rocky Mountains that go up through Canada was going right over them. Uh, we landed in Winslow, Arizona, and uh, then we flew from there. We, we, we flew from there to Cleveland, Ohio, and got fogged in. So uh, um, that's when I took a train to go to Newport, Rhode Island. That was where I was supposed to go. And when that train went through Albany, I got homesick. Yeah. My heart came out of me. I had, I was almost ready to jump ship, so to speak, and come home. But uh, thank God I did. I went to Newport, and I finished uh, about three weeks of torpedo training. I learned all about torpedoes, how they operate. The gyro works them up and down. The rudder works them like that. They run on air and alcohol, and and compressed air. And that's their power. And uh, they carry about a ton and a half uh, warhead, See? which is detonated with a with a little cap up in the front. Cast TNT, a cast TNT will not explode. You could hammer it all day with a sledgehammer and it wouldn't blow up. But they had uh, a cap in the front when it hit its target, and that would set off a booster charge of about that long and about that big around, which set right in the head. And when that went off, that would set off the, the TNT. And, and uh, I think the whole torpedo weighed about a ton and a half. The head probably, well, like a big bomb. You carried two on port and two on starboard? Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was looking for some pictures of my PT. I went down the cellar and looked and I could not find them. I know I got them there. You, you get the no, I don't book? Mm -hmm. and we'll have to look, come back and talk to some other time because we'll definitely want to see some photographs. I'll try to look them up. I got some of my other shit. Now, when I got back, I was uh, I went to Newport. I went to school for three weeks. They were rushing us through. You didn't have you you got to be uh, general knowledge of things, but you didn't get to be an expert. You got you, your expert yeah. when you get out on the ship. And then I went to um, uh, I came home three weeks leave, and I had a ball for three weeks. Then zing, my next uh, assignment was a destroyer, and I had to wait for that to be built too. I went down to uh, Kearney, New Jersey. Or I, was, I, I stayed in Brooklyn Navy Yard, but that's right close to the ship, shipyards, Brooklyn Navy Yard. And uh, that's, uh, let me see, I, I, I met Roly Yaw. That might be one guy you might want to talk to. I met him yeah. down there. First guy I met from, oh, I met two guys. When I was in the Aleutians, I met a guy that ran the Army Navy store. I can't remember his name, but he was a little guy. And he said, Ticonderoga, and boy, my, my blood come right to life. Holy yeah. Jesus, in the Aleutians, mind you. That was the first guy I ever saw after I left home. So, anyway, I got on that destroyer, and uh, and the shakedown crews uh, was I saw Willie Yaw in the uh, in the Brooklyn Navy Yard, and then uh, uh, we took our shakedown crews to make sure the ship was ship shape. We went to Bermuda, came back to Brooklyn Navy Yard, and checked out all the little bugs that were what was the name of uh, the ship? weren't working just right. What was the name of the destroyer? Uh, the USS English. English. The six ninety six. Is the number, um, and then it was just a straight shot down to, uh, through the Panama Canal for the second time. Uh, the Panama Canal is a really a series of lakes, and they had to put locks in to lift you up to the lakes and then drop down. And next time I waved goodbye to the Toboga because I went right by it again, and right out to Pearl Harbor. And uh, from Pearl Harbor. Uh, we went to the South Pacific, and we were engaged in numerous battles. I can't even uh, name them uh, all. Uh, but anyway, we we got uh, we shot down four Jap planes, sunk the biggest sub they had, and uh, 
and uh, uh, we got let me see four four battle stars, uh, silver stars, I believe. Would you like to see a picture of that ship I was on? Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can I get by you here? Hi, this Patrick. What's your name? Patrick. Patrick. I hear more. He was uh, pretty handy, and that's all pencil drawn. Hey, let's hold that right up. Yeah. Okay. Now uh, here is where we sank the sub, the biggest sub Japan had. And here, there's one star missing. We had five stars for, for shooting down five planes, but one star is gone. These are my battle ribbons here, uh, Asiatic Pacific, good conduct. Hey, good conduct, you couldn't do much wrong out there. <laughs> <laughs> if I could make it. Uh, my battle station was, uh, this is a five inch gun, and right, that little turret right there, see that? Yeah. That is uh, that is a torpedo tubes, and they are on a, a mechanized thing that'll turn them out so you won't hit your own ship. All along the sides we have Y guns, uh, which uh, carry 300 uh, pound uh, depth charges, and uh, and we have some off the back. So when we like when we went went after this sub right here, we shed out a pattern. We shot them out the side. We for, you could we had what they call sonar, and it would tell you how deep that thing was. And we and that was my job. Set set the depth charges for the right size, and then fire them uh, simultaneously. We tr we tried to start a pattern. We we would, we had our radar up front, and we'd see the the sub. You know, they up on the bridge is where they could see that. They tell us when to fire, and um, we sit on. Well, anyway, we got that one. They figured that was the biggest sub they had right there. Um, I put a little right right up here. Who wants to? You read that, Mike. Read it up. Uh, right up there. What did I say? The ship, the USS English, a 222,000 yeah. 22, ton destroyer. ton destroyer was put on the put in commission from the Brooklyn Naval Yard in 1943. I wrote it, wrote it from committing... Right is terrible. Yeah. Date to the end of the war. It covered a lot of ocean in in, and saw its share of the action donated to the Takaroga Historical Society on the 50th celebration of the end of World War II. Okay, well that's a picture of my ship. Not long ago there's another ship up there that's the uh, same class. See that one there? Uh, the VFW, the boys in the VFW gave me that. Uh, I, I don't know what their reason for but they wanted to, they wanted to so they, they did that. A little dust on that baby. Yeah, I'll put that back. So, where we, did we get did we get back home yet from the World War? You're we, out in the Pacific. No, you're out in the, the Pacific destroyer? at this point. Out in the Pacific. Okay. I, uh, I uh, this is uh, VFW members, and some of these people are still alive. So I'm going to give you a few names after them. I want to show you something. Yeah. You never did. I think one of the most tensest mo moments that I can remember is when. Uh, we were getting pretty close to Japan. They were pretty near ready to surrender, and they were putting their last gasp into a, a big naval battle. Yeah. And you ever hear the uh, 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 you see, uh, uh, Yamato, Yamato, the biggest battleship. ship, yeah. the biggest battleship in the whole world. Yeah. And uh, they were keeping tabs on it. And the planes said that it was leaving uh, Tokyo with uh, a whole squadron of destroyers and uh, and cruisers. And see, that's a battle. That's a battle. Group. And they were coming down to try to stop us. Yeah. Of course, we had planes. We, we saw all of it. They shot planes. Now, I've seen more planes fall out of the sky. And I swear to God, the pilots didn't look a bit older than this boy right here. Back. Not older. They didn't look a bit. But Japanese either looked real old or real young to me. That's the way, uh, yeah. that, when I looked at them, that's the way I saw them. And those pilots were young boys. You know, they just they taught them how to fly a plane and, and try to hit something. That's the way they didn't get much training. Yeah. Well, they had expert pilots. They had some. They had some aces too, but uh, the younger boys were just used as cannon fodder. Yeah. And I, I, I remember seeing one young lad. He tip, shot the tip of his wing off, and he tried to hit us. And uh, he got about from here to the road, you know, that close. And I could see the determination to, to, to sear that plane, but he couldn't do it. And when it hit the water, it shattered on our bridge. It broke all the glass up there, cut the cap, it cut everybody to hell. Uh, nobody got you know, real hurt, but it was flying glass that got us. 
and from here to the road, that, that, that was a novel concussion, 500 pound mile. Uh, yeah. It didn't hurt the ship any. Yeah. We did get shot up. We got into a one, oh yeah, we did have, we had one naval battle. A Jap, a, 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 when we was at Okinawa, this um, Jap DE, which is smaller than a, than a destroyer, a little smaller, it's probably a 2,000 ton ship. And it, it, uh, we had five inch, that's all our biggest guns, and I think they had three inch. And they darted out of a, a bay, and they got between our ship and our sister ship. And it started shooting both ways. Whang, 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 whang. They filled our bow. They, they just plowed right through the paint locker, shot all, uh, just filled our bow full of, of uh, shells. And we couldn't fire it because they were right in between us. So uh, I guess they uh, they got their signals and one ship slowed in. The other went full speed ahead, and then it's when uh, uh, we got our guns on her. And we, when we hit that thing, it was at night, by the way. You could just see the flashing. And at night, when when uh, our, uh, the other ship got out of the way, we put our five inch. We had twin five inches, three of them, two up front and one in back. If you notice that picture there, and we come got the bear. We hit that ship. It must have hit the ammunition. Uh, thing because that when that blew up, holy cow, the whole sky lit up. Wow. But we didn't. I didn't see nothing more than that. Yeah. Yeah. So that was an exciting night, I'll tell you. <laughs> and then we uh, made a raid on uh, Tokyo. Uh, we went in to bombard, but by that time uh, they had already dropped one A bomb, and uh, the Japs were thinking about surrender. But the pressure was on. And we were, we was the first ship to sail in, the first surface ship to sail into Tokyo Bay. We led that, huh? that battle group. And it was, let me see, two, I think, two or three of our, of our squadron and a couple of cruisers. We went in and bombarded. Just Do you remember any of the other ships that you would be in close, the American ships that in your squadron? What you, you, do you remember any of the other ships in oh the yeah. battle group oh by yeah. name? Oh, sure, sure. The, oh, yeah, the carriers. I remember Bob Hill, who lived here. I remember Bob. Yeah. He was on the Lexington. Uh, Tom Ledoux was on the Santa Fe a cruiser. And uh, our sister ships was the Alt. Um, let me see. Um, I can't remember. I, I, I wish I'd have thought a little bit. I could tell you about But the Alt was one of the sister ships. We were the English, the Spiri. And, well, there was six of us anyway. All that one squadron. We weren't close together. We were sprinkled through the fleet, the battle fleet. You'd have your carriers, and your battle wagons and your cruisers were in what they called a, a, the battle fleet. And then the third and fifth fleets are the fleets that that were consisted of the crew of the carriers. Tom uh, Tom Burns up in Crown Point. You know what Tom? Yeah. Uh, Tom was uh, with, uh, I think he was, he was on the San Jacinta, the same one that our first President Bush was on. He, oh. he, he served on that, yeah. and he was a tail gunner in uh, uh, an Avenger. An Avenger. Yeah. Yeah. So you know playing better than I do. But hey, that's what he was. He was maybe he'd be a good guy to talk to. He yeah. never talks about it, but maybe he will. Uh, I don't know. I'll ask him sometime, if you will. There's a lot of guys I'm going to talk to right now for you now. Okay, now. What would you like to know about it? Okay. <laughs> what have we talked about, roughly? He may have covered some of your questions, yeah. but you may have others. So, uh, through your um, list. Well, ask me a few questions, yeah, that's it. See how good my brain is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. What was what it like, like coming home? Huh? What was it like coming home? Who what? What was it like coming home? Oh, you can't believe how good it was. Uh, an elated feeling. I felt like uh, I'd been. Uh, I didn't know how to think, really. I, I thought, here, I'm coming back. I did come back to a job because uh, the company that I worked for, International Paper, uh, guaranteed me a, a job. So I went back to work uh, there. I was working on what they call the hog train, and that is uh, a place where they build up broke to make paper, and it builds up so fast, oh, God, I worked my tail off pushing those big heavy carts up and down into the box cars and things like that. At that time, the old mill was down in the village. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah. Oh. Remember how all the smoke come out and all the houses peeled, the paint peeled and everything? Yeah. And right where Bicentennial Park is now, you wouldn't believe it. That's where, that was a big complex of railroads. You, you can see the beds all over time. And, uh, and uh, a big mill, a lot of smoke, steam. I worked in, uh, I worked in uh, the, the digester room, 
and that's where you have the chips come down and they cook them. Kind of like that. Uh, was it good to get home? Yes, it was. But it was really, it was so great. Yeah. What else you got? Oh, that's about it. Well, yes. well it was good. Does anyone else want to ask questions? We can. How many uh, years were you in World War II? Uh, j just four. Uh, I was in, I, I, I got in in 42, 42, 43, 44, and 45. The war was over in 45. Yeah. And that paper there where the Japs quit, you can pass that around if anyone wants to see it. And uh, it'll tell you a little bit about uh, we're going home, stuff like that. I think a lot of people don't realize how many years some people went away to the war. And some people were married and oh, yeah. have kids. Yes. When I, when yeah. I come back, uh, uh, I really didn't have a permanent girlfriend, so when I come back, uh, the girl that I was going with had got married. Uh, that was all. We wasn't, you know, we wasn't uh, what you call deathly in love. Like someday we'll get that way. <laughs> but Gus, you're, you, when you were in war for four years, you were away from home for four years. Except for when I came home and uh, uh, after the after the Aleutian campaign. Right. But that was for a short period of time. Yeah, just for 10 days. So it's hard for people to understand today when they talk about war. Yeah. The young generation doesn't understand that when you signed up and you went away, yeah. you were away for many years. From 43, I didn't come, I, I was I was in the Pacific. Uh, uh, from 40, well, let me see, I, I can't remember just what month it was that that ship was commissioned. But from then in 43 until the war's end, 45, 44. I was, I was out in the Pacific, going back and forth, you know. Uh, so your only forth. communication would have been from letters, uh, letters that I've got, and the paper. Somebody may have mailed you a local Ticonderoga newspaper uh, or something. Yes. You must have loved to get those things. Oh, everybody, I ever shared them with the crew. Every everybody man. would share newspapers, wouldn't yeah. they? There was. A, oh, I got a good one for you. There was a kid from uh, Kentucky, and he he didn't. He was, well, let's, let's say he was defunct. He, he couldn't write and he couldn't read, but he was a good guy. His name was Tom. Uh, and Tom, uh, we played an awful trick on him. We, we said, uh, Tom, don't you know, he never got any mail. So we said, do you know anybody back in uh, Kentucky? He said, oh, I know an old girl back there. And I said, well, uh, why don't you, he said, I can't write. I can't. <laughs> I said, let's, let's write a letter. He had an address, he had a girl, and we started a romance. We wrote a letter, uh, my name is Tom, you remember me, and went on, and uh, I remember you, and I'm out in the Pacific, and I was thinking of you. That was the first letter. She got a letter back, probably written by somebody pretty much like us, yeah. you know. <laughs> and the guy, <laughs> you talk about brains working. We had moonlight nights and stars. Your eyes are like stars, and every twinkle of the of the waves is, uh, <laughs> makes me think of you. And oh Christ, all the love in a, a body come out in those letters. Well, her letters come back, and evidently somebody was writing for her the same way. And, they, and all of a sudden, Tom became a star, and he couldn't wait for a letter to show up. Oh yeah, they really did. Yeah. <laughs> I heard, uh, I heard he got married to her, and I hope he did. Wow, that's uh, true. Yeah. But Tom was something. He was a real easygoing Southerner that would just talk slow. Yeah, I know an old girl. And we started the romance. <laughs> <laughs> that's fantastic. Yeah. What was what was it like living on? I I I don't know. I I have relatives who served on ships in World War II. They were on uh, heavy cruisers. But what's it like serving on a the life on a on a destroyer? They're a little bit smaller in size, but it's still a good sized ship. But how are the sleeping quarters? How are the food? How, how are the meals? I mean, well, how do they take care the, of you? The, the, the meals were pretty good, considering three squares a day. Uh, yeah, unless you was in uh, by, by when you were when you were in gentle quarters, you didn't got no rest. You stayed up all day, all you night. You stayed up all day and all night, and they, it didn't make any difference. If you had a watch, and you'd been up all day at general quarters, you stood your watch. If you were so tired, you couldn't keep your eyes open, you know. So I didn't, that part was tough. Okay, let me blow my nose because I got a cold. Sure. Yeah. And you're hearing me pluck. I see these degrees here. See, see three thousand, then go down below that. If I read it right. Thirty-one, thirty-two, thirty-three. Louisiana. 
Uh, that should be uh, that should be New Orleans. Did I do it right? Uh, New Orleans is down at 35. Okay, let's see if I got. Well, okay, uh, I got. You're had, close. You had 34. Uh, 34 for Lake Thompson. That is a. That's where I stayed in a boathouse. I was on subsistence. Did you ever hear of subsistence? Subsistence. Well, it's a. Uh, uh, it's a way where they. Uh, you are on your own in a strange country, let's say, because Louisiana, I'd never been there before. And I had to buy my own food. Uh, the, my lodging was a boathouse. They put me in a boathouse with a bunk. I, and it must have been a, a real ritzy one because it was a beautiful place. And I was on, I didn't remove my nose yet. And uh, 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 I had to buy my own food. Well, I was, I was uh, writing home all and letters took forever to get there. And there I was, no money. Thanksgiving Day, 1942. See, I, I, I hadn't even, well, wait, uh, no, uh, Thanksgiving's when, November? November. I just, just turned 21, and no money. I, I got down there on Thanksgiving Day, and I had a little change in my pocket. And that place is full of slot machines, and I was putting the nickels in one at a time. I put in one, I'd get two by it. Then I put in three and get two by it. And finally, I run out of money. I only had about a dollar, and it wasn't enough to buy the sandwich. So here I am. I'm, I'm hungry and no money. I didn't know nobody either. <laughs> so the waitress come up. I was in that uh, restaurant. The waitress come up. She says, uh, "Sailor, here's a, 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 tr a turkey sandwich." And I said, "Well, I can't pay for it." She said, "I'm a, I'm the house." <laughs> she leaves. And the next day I got money from home. I had yeah. some money, but so then I was able to live. And you had to watch it too because you you couldn't go splurging because if you did, you'd run out. And uh, well, anyway, that that was New Year's Day. Or, I mean, that was uh, that was Thanksgiving. Yeah. Okay. Uh, on Christmas Day, I was on the island of Taboga. Go find it. <laughs> okay. And I go blow my nose. Find the island of Taboga. Uh, uh, did I did I give you a number to go by? Let me see. Uh, Taboga Island, Panama. Okay. Well, that'll tell you. You know where Panama is. Now find Panama. that island. It's on the Pacific side. I'll go blow my nose. Yeah. Panama. Give her over there and get a good picture. There you go. Yeah, that's, that's, uh, that was the newspaper on our ship when the war was over. Uh, you find the boat there? Take this look. Here's a, here's a thing. Let me see that, will you? Because my eyes are so bad. I'm blind in one eye. It should be just on the Pacific side of Panama. This will be right down over here. Uh, I think the boat, I think it'll say it. T-O-B. Oh, yeah. uh, look right there somewhere. You, move out of here. You, you find it's a little small island. Oh, yeah. Uh, Toboga. Yeah. Okay, that's when the PTs come down. We, we left Lake Ponson Train, which is over at Louisiana. Went to see Petersburg, oh, yeah. uh, which is right somewhere around Pensacola. Well, no, Cuba. I'm not in Cayenne. But right here in Florida, right about there, I guess. And we took a, we cruised around the, oh, that was my first, I, 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 I you know, I used to be in, the biggest boat I ever got on, I guess, other than uh, the old Ticonderoga, was a rowboat. Yeah. And I rowed boats up and down Ticonderoga, which is good for your back arms and all that. <coughs> but when I got on that PT boat, it was a, more fun. I'd get right up on the bow, but, you know, when I wasn't, uh, what, what, what can you do when you're riding along, you know, you're just, uh, so um, we were going by Cuba, yeah. and a guy by the name of Hoke was a southerner. And I'm at the wheel. It's at night. And I was going, I couldn't read a compass to save my neck. I'm not too great at it now, but, but then I couldn't read it at all. And I was watching the little dim light on the boat ahead of me. So I'm by myself up on the wheel and all, all the rest of the guys are down below the deck sleeping. I thought. So I start singing. <laughs> I let the square dance. I'm saying, while we go marching through Georgia, hooray, yeah. hurrah, hurrah, square dancing. And you know, I didn't realize that this guy Hope, who was a southerner from Florida, was down there listening to me. All of a sudden, there was two little doors that go like this, where you come up to the, 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 the steering wheel. Them doors flew open, and that Hope come up through there, and he says, knock that off. I said, what's the matter with you, Hope? He says, that's an insult to the South. I said, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. He says, if I hear you say that one more time, I'm going to bang you. Well, he went down, and the door shut, and he went, I said, well, who the hell does he think he is? I was full of pee and vinegar myself. Yeah. And uh, I started in again. Well, the next time he come up, I'm at the wheel. The rest of the people are sleeping. Yeah. 
and he come right at me, and geez, he drove me one, and boy, the fight was on. We went right from the from the bridge down between the torpedo tubes, and we were pounding the hell out of each other. In the meantime, nobody's at the wheel. It's night. Uh, a, a boat will tend to turn, and uh, the, the propeller will tend to turn it. Well, <laughs> the darn thing turned like that. And finally, I realized I couldn't get the best of him, and he couldn't get the best of me. Well, we were punching each other <laughs> like crazy. And finally, I realized, geez, I'm responsible for this boat. And I said, okay, well, we'll call it truce, okay? I said, I won't sing it no more if you don't come pounding me up. <laughs> and so we had our truce. He went down below. And then I'm looking around the ocean, and I said, where, whoa, where is that little dim light? And I, I could see something. Good th if it had been today, I'd have, well, I would never see it, because I'm blind in this eye already. But I saw this little dim light, and I said, geez, that's got to be it. I couldn't see nothing anywhere. I took that PT and I opened her right up. Jesus, she coming up on top of the water. Now she's new. Yeah. Uh, when they're new, they aren't water logged or nothing. She came up on top of the water and thank God that was that was a, we was the last boat. If we'd been in the middle somewhere, I wonder what would have happened then, but it happened to be we were last. And I caught up and I could see that boat right close to it and I made sure that was a PT. <laughs> and I followed it. <laughs> Hell of an old uh, one of those Cuban boats that I followed, but as it was, it was it was the, the one that, that you know the arch squadron. That's my little story there. You you got millions of little stories that you know, like the snake and like the caribou herd that stampeded when our plane took off from Alaska. I never saw so many backs in my life. It was just like a carpet. Huh. There's an awful lot of animals up there in Alaska. I tell you, like oh, yeah. the, it's a caribou herd. And um, I went. I, I, I took a trip up into Attu when I was there, and there's, there, there's like I said, no trees, tundra grass, and there's freshwater rivers coming out of the loop, and that's where the fish go to spawn. And they were so thick, I don't know what kind of fish they were, but they were so thick you could walk on them. They were just fighting each other to get up. A stream about as wide as from here to the, well, you know, maybe 12 foot. A uh, little stream going that there was too deep, maybe about that deep. So many fish in it that they were just fighting each other to get out. You wonder where the water was. So then, you said you were in South America patrolling. Uh, I went to, uh, no, I didn't patrol. Uh, uh, Columbia is right here. We we sailed up a river. That that's when I like I told you I love to be on the bow of PT. I get right up on the bow and I put my arms around like this. And I hang on and I look down. Well, the Baron Kela sits up a long, uh, sits up a river. It's got to be right up in. Right near Panama, right here somewhere. Can you see Baron Keel on there? It's the capital, I think. Look and see if you can find it. You've got to be in Columbia. Yeah, it's right. Okay. Uh, is it way up? It's right. It's, it's up it's a river. It's kind of in the middle. It's, it's, okay. Well, we went up a river up there. Yeah. And um, I was on the bow of the PT, hanging on like this. And the water, I swear to God, it was just as clear like Lake George used to be. Yeah. Uh, years ago, you could look in 50, 60 foot of water and see bottom. You can't look in five foot now and see bottom. That's how clear that used to be back, uh, back in the 40s. I'll, I'll say. Well, that's the way that water was. And I'm looking down and like this, and all of a sudden I saw a fish as long as this room coming right at me. And it looked like it was going right down his throat. It, was sort of, it looked like a big bullet, ocean, probably an ocean catfish. Yeah. And I just froze right on that and went right over the top of it, and it was down deep. A little while later, up that same river, um, there was a, a clearing. It's all jungle, a big clearing, and there was little piles of hay all along the, the banks and in a little bit. And one of the boat captains sounded his siren. It was a pygmy village. Mm -hmm. Guys, about this high, there were, the, the whole the whole town was inside of that those grass huts. They exploded. They went around through the sides, I see grass hanging off their arms. <laughs> and the tallest guy there was shorter than him. Oh yeah, shorter than him. And, oh, he looked, and their eyes are big and white, and up they run right through the right through the side of their building. <laughs> oh, it exploded. Let's see, what else we want? Oh, well anyway, you found some of the this is where I went with the with the thing. I started at Ticonaroga, I went there for the army, then Newport, then Lake Pontchartrain, Louisiana, St. Peter's Shakedown, past Cuba. Uh, Baron Kill of Columbia, that's where the dope is now and all through there. And then uh, uh, that uh, Banja, California, San Francisco, that's when I danced with Veronica Lake. 
Seattle's when we got on board the uh, Delwood, mm -hmm. the little freighter, and went to the Aleutians. Coal Bay's where I almost froze to death in Canada. Then Dutch Harbor, I had to Kisco where I saw the Japs. And then back to Dutch Harbor, and that's when I saw the caribou explode or stampede. And we took off on a plane over the Canadian Rockies. Cleveland, Ohio, we got fogged in. The airplane took me to Winslow, Arizona. And then we flew to Cleveland, got fogged in, and that's when I got, went by Albany, and that's when I almost jumped ship. Remember? Yeah, yeah. Got past that one, down to Providence, then I had my leave. Then on the other side, I was trying to follow out the destroyer. I had a 10 day leave, it seemed like, something like that. And then I went to Brooklyn Navy Yard, shaped down to Bermuda, back to New York City, after the, uh, to take the bugs out. Straight down through the Panama, straight to Pearl Harbor. That's where I see all the ships laying on by the Arizona and, <coughs> and all that. My friend Dan Pazula, you know Dan. Yeah. Dan was stationed at uh, Schofield Barracks in Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to see him in the worst way. So uh, I, I got on a bus and I went up to Schofield Barracks, which is way up in the mountains. And I asked, and I saw all these guys around with their little sticks, picking up a cigarette bus. And I went over to one of them and I said to him, I said, I'm looking for my friend Danny Pizzola. He's a squire, or uh, he's a, uh, uh, I gave him a number and everything. And the guy looked at me and went like this. I don't know what him, he can't talk. <laughs> I went to another one that was doing the same thing. Went like that. And I said, what the hell? And then all of a sudden he pointed at a guard walking by with a gun. You know? So I go over to the guard and I says, what's the matter with them guys? He says, they're all Italians, they can't speak English. They brought them from Italy to Pearl Harbor, can you imagine? Uh -huh. Way over to Pearl Harbor. And he says, they're all Italians and they can't speak English. And I said, well, gee, I <laughs> wonder. <coughs> so I told him about Dan and he tricked me right to where Dan was. <coughs> Dan wanted to go and have a drink up here right off, but he was on duty. Couldn't yeah. And he said, get it, go have a beer with you. <laughs> well, hey, we shot the breeze and hugged each other and everything. Yeah. And that was the first Ticonderoga fellow I met after I left. So I, I told you about the guy in the Aleutians, the guy that ran the Army and Navy store, yeah. a, little, a, little, a little short Frenchman. I can't make anything. Else. Okay, I met two. And then the next one I saw was Bob Hill. Uh, we would, uh, our, uh, we'd have to refuel. That was one of the most dangerous parts of uh, for me anyway, was this refueling. Um, you had to maintain a good speed because if you went slow, you, your ship would wow and you'd bang into each other. So we, we refueled off battle wagons, carriers, big ships that had lots of oil. And uh, we, we'd get all about from here, uh, I'd say the width of this house or something, not, something, somewhere like that. And you had to go fast. Because if you did, you start wallowing and you, you couldn't control your boat. Yeah. And they shoot a line across, a, a small line, uh, from our ship to the, uh, the carrier or the, on the battle wagon, whatever it happened to be. We refueled off the, uh, off the Essex, or the Lexington, that's what Bob was on. Yeah. And uh, it was just like, Bob told me, he said, it was just like looking at a chip of wood down in the ocean. He says that destroyer looked that small. I can see oh, yeah. him up there. I can see him up on the deck, and uh, I'd put a note in a, uh, an empty shell, and I'd throw it just because I couldn't. And of course, it never hardly ever made it. And he did the same thing. And then, then we got the, then we got the quartermasters to start exchanging uh, messages between us. You know, yeah. we'd tell him what to say, and he'd do it with a brick like that. You know, it was, uh, something like the voice yeah. 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 Where did I get lost? I got lost. I get lost in this thing up here. <laughs> um, oh, oh, the next guy. Okay, I saw. I, okay, I saw Bob. And then um, our ship uh, at Ulithi. Did you find Ulithi? I, I, it's in the South Pacific or something. Well, anyway, it's down in uh, the Marshall. I think the Marshall Islands is it. We hit a whale. Yeah. We figured that it weighed at least a hundred tons. A hundred tons a lot of weight but it's no match for 2,200. But when it hit it, it caved our bow right in. It caved it right in. And uh, the whale rolled under the ship, got caught it in the screws, uh, big propeller as high as this room probably, 
put big gashes in it, and a hole, in, and then it floated to the top of the water, and it lay there. It didn't flip, didn't do nothing, and the ocean turned red. Because, you know, they're a mammal, yeah. and they're blood. And boy, I'm telling you, I, I'll bet you the sharks come from miles away. Must have. But the, the whale was stunned or dead because he was bleeding like that. Well, here we are with our bow cave again. You ever hear of a floating dry dock? Yep. Well, we thought we were going back to Seattle or, or, or the West Coast. No way. Floating dry dock. Come right over, got underneath us, take 2,200 ton right up in the air. They have welders right there at Ulithi. They cut our bow out, welded a new bow, they had plate metal, welded it right back in. And we was only there about uh, two weeks, or if we were there that long. And then we joined the fleet again. That was my, my vacation. Uh, I met Bob Hill on the island on Ulithi. Bob saw me coming, and he was hiding behind a, a palm tree, what it was left of him. Because they'd shell that so much, they're just stumps sticking out, you know, and, and the one that's on around there, because they, they, blew the, they blew that island all to pieces. And uh, so Bob saw me coming, he, knew me, he jumped behind a tree, and I walked right by him, and he says, Hey, Aruga! Holy jump, I came out of my skin. And then uh, you could get 3.2 beer. That was hardly any alcohol at all. And we bought all the beer we could get. And the guy, a lot of guys didn't drink, so we bought their beer. Well, we drank so much beer, you couldn't even taste it. It didn't, do us, it didn't hop us up or nothing. But we were hopped up enough just seeing each other. Oh, yeah. That was really something. Okay, so I see Bob there. And then the war was over, or uh, after uh, the surrender. Any more questions? No, well, that's about it. How'd you like this? Uh, it wasn't too hard. Yeah. How would yeah. you like to look over some of my, um, um, you know, some of the BFW members you might be able to contact? Okay. okay. That would help a lot. Could you get a copy of that and put it in your thing? Okay. Can we get a copy of that? Take it. Okay. Okay. It's the whole thing. It's not much. We can, uh, I'll make a copy of school.